Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank you guys for coming. We, we do. We appreciate the work that you do as you cover our players and our program that's important to us and for us. Also, I'd like to thank you guys who, for the last couple of days, have covered our team uh, as we've done work for the Be The Match organization on campus, uh, trying to work to help save lives by getting our K-State students and people in the community to join the Be The Match registry for donors. And if any guys need more information about that, I, I'd ask that you contact Andy Talley, the Andy Talley Foundation and Be The Match directly. It's, uh, it seems like forever ago that we had the opportunity to play for and win the Big 12 championship. And, uh, you know, with the Big 12, and I know there are leagues out there that get a lot more press, but the Big 12 is one of the most competitive conferences in the country. And, and for us to have the uh, opportunity to win the conference championship was, was a special moment for, for us. And, you know, we talk about it as a team today, how special that 2022 season was. But it's important for us as coaches that we continue to push our guys past that moment. Yes, we want to honor that moment, but we want to make sure we understand that, that it's, it's our place right now to move our program to the next phase. Uh, and I talked last year in fall camp about the dynamic leadership that we have on our team. And, and it, it is actually continuing. You know, even though we've we, – and we'll talk about some of those guys in a minute. But we've, we've lost to Deuce Vaughn, although there may be rumor that he might be coming back for one more year. Uh, but we lost to Deuce Vaughn's and the Julius Brinces, but we've replaced them with guys who have the same leadership capabilities, the la same leadership potential, their experience on the field. They just don't have it uh, just yet. Uh, and so those things are continuing to show up for our team and they have this spring. Talking about this spring, from an offensive standpoint, the guys who have stood out to me, and I won't necessarily say that all these guys have stood out because of their practices, because some of them have not been able to get as much time on the field due to injuries or, or uh, things of that nature, as Al Serby would say. But Phillip Brooks has stood out, Keegan Johnson, Xavier Lord, R.J. Garcia. Yes, those guys are the receivers. I see them every day. But those guys have done a great job. And some of them have played quite a bit here, but some of them are, are getting better every day as they develop. D.J. Giddings uh, has done a good job, and he'll be a great player along with Trayshawn Ward. I've been impressed with those guys as they've uh, come along. On the offensive line, Cooper Beebe and Christian Duffy, along with Katori Levinston, those guys are mainstays. They've played around here for a good minute. But Andrew Lyon Gang, a young guy's uh, really been impressive to me. I don't get a see, chance to see offensive linemen much, but I've been impressed with those guys. Uh, at the quarterback, of course, Will has shown great leadership, great command of the offense. And from a defensive standpoint, just watching him, uh, I couldn't be be more impressed by his leadership and uh, what he does to the offense, for the offensive side of the ball. He's continually gotten better every practice. Avery Johnson is incredibly athletic with the ball in his hands. He, he shows big time speed and the ability to be able to push the ball downfield. He shows big time promise. So does uh, TJ, I mean, uh, TJ, Dan. Uh, so does Rubley and, uh, and, and Anthony Lard. Those guys are quarterback position. They've, they've shown some really special things. Now, defensively, I'm going to help your career out. All right, I'm going to give you two names uh, that you better make sure you know how to say because I've had some struggles. Uh, but Vi Suamalo, we know him as Uso, right? Uso is his nickname, just so we know that. Uh, uh, defensive tackle, and he's playing very well this spring. He's played very well this spring. The other name is Toby Usensami. And o Toby has, uh, man, been very impressive just because of his physicality and his ability to be able to run. Uh, both of those guys, again, they're very green, but they continually make plays and they're continually productive out there. On the defensive front, Khalid Duke, uh, Nate Matlack, those guys, they've, they've played some good football around here. But I've been impressed with Chidi Obazar, uh, a guy who was here early and uh, who has done a good job so far this spring. Jake Clifton, Austin Moore, Daniel Green, and really Jake Clifton being a younger guy, it's kind of funny to 
put him in the group with the older guys, but he played some good football, had some good snaps for us last season. I've been impressed with him, along with, like I said, the mainstays of Austin Moore and Daniel Green, Dez Purnell. Those guys, um, they continually provide us leadership. And, and really from a whole defensive standpoint, Austin – and Deuce or Daniel, those guys have shown to be the guys we would say are the leaders right now. As safety, VJ Payne, Cam Salas, Marquis Siegel, Terry Fair, all those guys, along with Kobe McAllister, they continue to get better every day. And Kobe is is rehabbing and doing his uh, uh, thing in terms of leadership, uh, getting better every day. And I'm I'm excited about that group. Uh, for most of my career, the cornerbacks, I've I've coached the cornerbacks who have walked in and hadn't been um, the highest rated or the highest regarded players. And this spring really has been no different. So I really get an opportunity to, to, to coach uh, and, and to help guys get better. And that's been, been cool for me this spring to watch Jordan Wright, to watch Will Lee, who just arrived this spring, to watch uh, Jacob Parrish, who's a freshman, play for us at the end, well, really throughout the season, played on special teams, but had more time toward the end of the year. And then Keenan Garber, who we just uh, – we we ended up stealing from the offense and throwing out there in the Big 12 championship. Luckily, they didn't have the roster. They didn't even know who he was. Uh, but he's continually gotten better uh, day after day in, in practices. And so uh, that's been cool for me. And then I – because they always get overlooked. The specialists of Jack Bloomer and Randon Platner, Chris Tennant, those guys probably are amongst the hardest workers and most athletic specialists, they paid me to say that, most athletic specialists that I've, I've been around. After all that, I'll open it up for you guys for any questions that you might have. Do you feel like the adaptation of the 3-3-5 defense has really started to take root with, with the spring uh, the spring session? Well, you know, as we've talked about this this new defense that we're playing over the last couple of years, we feel like uh, we continually need to evolve. We continually need to do things uh, that help make us better. And, you know, this has been a, a good change from us for us coming from the 4-3 to the 3 to a 3 high safety look. And so uh, what we've tried to do is what we tried to do la what we tried to do this spring is what we tried to do last fall is we tried to present the same look but but show different variations show different fronts and and be more aggressive and that's kind of one of the things that coach Klanderman has talked about is is wanting to be more aggressive uh, while also keeping our guys our defensive guys in a safe place uh, we we are as a staff uh, uh, probably a more aggressive staff than than you might than you might gather, but that's that's what we want to do. We want to be more aggressive. We want to show different looks within this. Again, I say this new system, and I say new because we're continually evolving as a staff. We're continuing to learn more about this system uh, and and to, to trying to find out exactly how it fits with the guys that we have. Cornerback room, the departures that you had, are there a couple of two or three names that have surged to the front that have kind of uh, gone to the front of the unit? Well, you know, when you look at last season in that room, m more than any two players, uh, Julius and Echo Boydo, those guys, they played, they, they, they had more reps than, than anybody. And uh, so to lose their rep count is uh, – is a challenge to be able to replace. Uh, but I've been impressed so far with, with really all of those guys. But Jacob has stood out. Jacob Parrish has continually stood out, uh, you know, being as young as he is and doing things at times that, that you don't even coach, uh, understanding angles, understanding body position. And there are no words sometimes to the things that he does from an athletic st athleticism standpoint. Omar Daniels, uh, been around here a while, but hadn't played as much, but he has a big time understanding of the system. He has a big time understanding of the way we do things, understanding of the communication that's needed to play the position. And so I'm excited about him this fall, uh, this spring for, for how he's played so far. Will Lee, who just walked into the, into the room, uh, has 
uh, been behind because these other guys have been on the campus and they know the stretch routines and they know where to find the training room. Uh, well, he's still finding his way, but continually I see flashes of athleticism that let me know that that he's going to be he's going to be just what we need, you know, in this group. But there's no there's no guy at this time who has just stood out amongst the rest because they all have really good strengths and they all have some some weaknesses that I can see as a coach. Uh, so I'm excited to have them all be able to fit in to to uh, make the group that that we think will, will be able to help us go back and, and compete for a Big 12 championship again. I believe we're five months removed from Kobe Savage's the day of the injury. Does he appear to be on the right track? And is he gaining confidence in playing on that knee? Well, nobody works harder than Kobe, and, and that's pre-injury and post-surgery. Uh, and so uh, as I've watched him, he's, he's continually work. He, he pushes – he pushes the training room. He pushes the rehab staff because he wants to do more. As, as I've watched him, he's always wanting to do more, and they have to continually hold him back. Uh, and so I, I would say, yes, he's, he's on path. He's on the, on the right track to be able to be where he needs to be. Uh, he goes through, when we have walkthroughs, things that he can do physically, he's out there. He's a part of it. He's a part of the communication. So I think that you know once he gets that medical clearance, then he he won't he won't lose a beat. Van, what do you think about the possibility of playing four or five cornerbacks this season compared to just pretty much the two you played in previous seasons? Well, that's always the goal, you know. And and I say it to our players that it's about the level of trust not not just the trust that I have in you, but the trust that your teammates can have, and you trust in the, the other coaches on the staff that they would have in your ability to go out and there not be a drop off in play. Uh, so I'm excited about where we are right now because I have four or five guys who have shown from a physical standpoint that they can do it, uh, and they continually impress upon myself and the other coaches on the staff that from a mental standpoint, from an assignment standpoint, from a technique standpoint, that they can go out and be able to be successful. I, I think it's especially at that position, all of the positions on the field, but really that one because you know you have guys who all of a sudden you got an ankle or you got a hamstring, and you have those little injuries that prohibit a guy from being at his best at that, at that position. Uh, so I'm excited to have as many guys as I can be in the pot, to be in the pool for us to be able to pull from. Not to mention that position is a big special team contributor, and so those guys being uh, uh, ready and able to be able to be special teams players, that's also important for us as well. So take us back to that first day when Keenan Garber decides he wants to play defense for you guys. What was that like? And also, did you recruit him to defense, or did he voluntarily say, "I want to come play for for that side of the ball"? Well, I, th I think it was it was a uh, it was a twofold situation because Keenan was not getting the reps that he would have liked as a wide receiver, and we had some injuries and we had some some things that we were dealing with at cornerback from a depth standpoint. And, uh, and so it, it actually ended up being a perfect marriage. But I've always worked with Keenan on the special team, so I've always been impressed with the way he handled his business once he became an older player. Uh, so, so to have the opportunity to have him come into the room uh, was, was inviting for me, but I think it was inviting for him because he could see the opportunity to be able to get on the field. And, and little did he know, you know, we would, we would have injuries that would force him onto the field earlier than he would have liked because the, the agreement, the thought process was, listen, we're going to put you over here, learn the position in the spring. You'll have an opportunity to learn even more and you'll be able to compete. And so, like I said, we, we just, because of his speed and his athleticism, we just felt the need to throw him in there a little bit earlier and it, and it worked out for him and for us. How, how big was having Jordan Wright around all of last year to kind of sit back and, and, and watch Julius and, 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 and Echo throughout all that? Well, if you think about it, a guy like Jordan was here, but Jordan didn't get the benefit of a spring. So in that room, this is Jordan's first spring. This is Justice Clemens' first spring. It's Jacob Parrish's first spring. So there's a lot of guys in that room who this is their first opportunity to go through a spring practice. In my opinion, spring practice is where you learn the most. When you get into fall camp, 
you're learning there's there's some learning in fall camp, but it's not like spring practice. You're not scheming for a team. Even in fall camp, you you blink into pre- preparation for your first opponent or maybe your first two opponents. Spring practice is not like that. And so to have Jordan around to be able to go through the fall and and gain experience and hear the words and hear the calls and understand the communication, that's that's uh it 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 is invaluable at this point because I can compare him and his experience right now to to what it's like for Will Lee, a guy who is every day trying to catch up, you know, to learn to to learn the lingo, to learn this communication, to understand exactly where he's supposed to line up. So I think it's been great for Jordan. And in his performance, I, I've seen it pay off. You've been here every year with Coach Kleiman in Manhattan. This will be year five. Many others have as well. What's the value of that staff continuity? I think, I think it's big time. And, and Coach Kleiman always talks about it because – the same thing that you can say about players when you say understanding the way we do things, you know, understanding the way uh, Coach Kleiman as a head coach, as a leader, the way he thinks and understanding the, the way uh, we, uh, we've built our culture. I think it goes a long way into that. But not only with the teaching, not only with the scheme, you know, when, when you bring in new coaches and when you have continual changing in the coaching staff, and, you know, it makes it hard. I will believe it makes it harder on the head coach. I believe it makes it more difficult on the coordinators, not to mention more difficult on the players as they are attempting to learn a, a new coach, a, a new way of communication, a new way of doing things in within that position group. So I'm excited that our staff – uh, continues to st- continues to stay together. Uh, I think we like each other a little bit, uh, and I think that plays in, uh, that plays a part of it. But also this community of Manhattan, uh, our leadership and our, within our, our athletic department plays a role in that. And uh, and I look for us to be together twenty or thirty more years. I believe you're the third or fourth different coach that's already mentioned. True freshman Chidi Ubiezer. Uh, just what has kind of separated him at this point? Well, it, the fact that he continually – and, again, I don't coach the guy. but I, and, and So it's easy for me. I just want to see who's making plays at those other positions, right? And he continually is in places where he's getting a sack. or he's in, And so we, we defensively – we keep up with production. And, uh, and so he continually is a productive guy. He's getting a tackle for loss. He's getting a sack. And is he always right? No, he's not always right because I hear that too, you know. But he's a freshman. He should be in high. He should be somewhere uh, taking homemaking or something right now. But but he's here, and so um, to be productive uh, and to be here early is 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 big time, you know, for for a young guy. And so I can see why uh, myself as well as the other coaches continually call his name, and we hope that pays off for him and us this fall as well. Coach, you had some praise for Avery Johnson a little bit earlier and his athleticism that stood out to you. I'm just curious kind of what you maybe have seen or observed in him around the other quarterbacks that have already been here and have been established and how he's kind of, I don't know, come to adjust to the college game. Well, again, just like we talked about Cheedy, he's a young player, you know, and, and when you watch younger players, you just want to see can't. Is he faster than everybody? Is he competing, you know, when he runs? Well, of course, he was here early, and they go through the offseason. And so to, to watch him compete, he was on one of my competition teams. So to watch him compete, uh, I, I, I was impressed by that. And so then to, to watch him come out and put the pads on, there have been days where we have taken the green jerseys off the quarterbacks to give them an opportunity to see what it feels like to be hit. And so sometimes quarterbacks don't like that that portion of the drill, but but he's relished in it as a young player, you know. And so that's I've been impressed with that. Uh, definitely when he gets the ball and he takes off with it, right? That there are not many people catching him, you know. And and that for a quarterback, I remember you know that being something that Adrian would do, and that's something that Skyler would do. That's something that Will does at times. But this dude, he just looks different, you know, when he takes off. On, on that, I did want to ask about Will and his development. Obviously, last year was kind of a huge step forward for him and his production. I'm just curious how that's carried over into the spring. Well, I, I don't, 
you know, I'll go all the way back to last year. There was a point when Adrian was doing his thing and, and he was setting the world on fire. He was a, a Heisman finalist, I think, um, uh, maybe semi-finalist at that moment. Uh, but, but Will was quietly just working. You know, Will was quietly working and doing the things that it takes that, that you always encourage players to do is, listen, just keep working and your time will come. You don't know how it will come. Unfortunately, sometimes it comes with injuries like it did with Adrian, but that's what I've seen out of Will. And, and the fact that you, when you have to, as a player, when you have to travel the road like that, uh, then – then you have a work ethic that you that you make sure that you that you stick to, and that's what I again that's what I've seen in Will, and I think our players have been impressed with it. Will's played a lot of football, uh, even as a young player, he's played a lot of football, and so I'm impressed with his the, the way he handles himself. We pressure quite a bit. We pressure those quarterbacks quite a bit, but. Uh, Will handles that pressure. He sits in the pocket. He delivers the football. And when things are not there, he he's able to make plays with his feet. I've been, like I said, I've been impressed with his ability to manage the the offensive football team. His ability to be able to make plays with his feet because you don't see a bigger guy do that, and and he's done that. But it's it's attributed to the work that he's done, you know, all the way since last season and since he's been here. Actually, you talked about the. The three three five is constantly evolving, and I know, uh, especially up front, Coach White and Two. He mentioned that it's kind of changed the way they have to recruit just because of the physical demands. Does that carry over to the back and two as far? Have you changed at all? Maybe what what you're looking for physically in guys? Or? Well, you know, you you have to continually, and, and I don't think it has changed because of the system that we play, the scheme that we've used. But you, when you play against the receivers that we play against, they're, they're bigger, they're more physical players. You have to make sure that you do the same thing on the defense, in the defensive secondary. And it's not just for the corners because you have those same kinds of guys nowadays. You have those same physical players you know, playing inside receivers. So your safeties have to be matched up. You have tight ends who who align away from the formation, who align out wide, and your safeties and your linebackers have to be in coverage on those guys. So we're continually looking for more physical players who are smart and who can communicate, but guys who have ability to be able to play man-to-man -man and guys who have the ability to be able to blitz is something that, that we are, are continually looking for at the safety position as well as the corner position. Some of those safety positions, we're, we're looking for corners who are more physical, you know, because they have to be a part of what's going on in the run fit. And so uh, because of the need for them to play man-to-man, -man, you know, you, you want the corner skill set, but then you want a bigger corner, a more physical corner because of the things that you'll ask them to do inside in the run game. So kind of put a premium on versatility to the 100%. You know, we do have profiles for those positions, you know, within our staff and and within recruiting, but the more a guy can do more things, the Josh Hayes of the world. They Josh came here as a corner and then he ends up being a, a safety just because of his skill set. Uh, to be able to play man to man, and and again his physicality and his ability to be able to match up against tight ends and against you know receivers who uh, who get down the field, and so uh, yes, you have to be a versatile player, and and we found success in those areas when we have guys who can do multiple things. Year five was mentioned earlier as the depth on this within this program. Eclipsed previous years from the talent that you've uh, built. Uh, I, I, when you look at the number of younger guys who have who have walked into this program, who have left their their final semester of of high school, you can't help but be encouraged because we didn't have that year one, you know. And and we spend a lot of time in this program working special teams and 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 that's like the biggest determiner of the level of talent that you have across the board you know because Deuce Vaughn is Deuce Vaughn and and some of those guys uh Felix there's not many of them but when you look across the board to see how many of your your guys 
can help you on special teams, just really talking from skill set, uh, the skill positions, we have more of those kinds of people. We have more of those bodies who are athletic enough to be able to help us on multiple special teams. Yes, a guy can play cornerback, but years past, that's all he could do. Yeah, a guy could play linebacker, but he couldn't help us on kickoff. He was just was not fast enough. Well, I talk about Toby. Toby can play on all those special teams, and he's a young guy who is already in the program, but we have a lot of guys who just walked onto the campus, like the Cam Salises of the world, who could play on multiple special teams. And that's, uh, I think, a, uh, an attribute or a indicator of us raising the level of talent here in, in this program. From your perspective, um, do the benefits of NIL still far outweigh any negatives that there might be? Well, you know, that that's a constant, that's a constant debate, right? But we may as well not debate because it's here. And, uh, and so for us as a program, what we've decided to do is educate our players on the great benefits for them that they have uh, with, with participating in the partnerships within NIL. Now, of course, there's probably people who do it a different way. There's probably people who um, take advantage of NIL uh, by taking advantage of it. Right. Well, well, we don't do that. Well, what we want to do is we want to educate our players and teach them about their brand. We want to let them know that there are partnerships worldwide that they can take advantage of. And uh, and, and I think that's where the beauty of that whole NIL program comes to life and allows your players to be able to take full advantage of it in a in a very positive way. Got a couple for you, Van. You've been across the country. How important is this practice facility, and how impressive is this practice facility for Kansas State? I think I think it's big time uh, because of the fact that you know, you, being going all across the country, uh, it's one of the nicer ones. You know, nationwide, it's definitely one of the nicer ones in our conference. And when when recruits walk on the campus. They want to see the stuff, right? They like to see the stuff. And when we, we talk about NIL, that's a part of the stuff. Well, I think our facilities and, and the way we take care of these facilities, that's a big testament to our commitment, to our athletic department uh, commitment, to our, our, our fan base, to our donors, their commitment. And, you know, kids, players, and their families, they're taking a look at that. They have for many years. But they're taking a look at that. So I think it's incredibly important that we show the commitment uh, of our athletic department to our players having the nicest things that we can give them. Just from a playing standpoint, just having all that extra space, what does that mean to the team? Well, for us, you talk about the, the space for cornerbacks. You know, there's been times where we couldn't work on deep balls, right? You know, when you look at the fall practices, we couldn't work on deep balls. I, I would love to use that as an excuse as to why the ball is being thrown over my guys' heads, um, but 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 I can't. Uh, but to be able to work, you know, to be able to work on things from a now, it does not matter how much space you give. Coach Stannard, a linebackers coach, he still is always going to find a way to encroach upon your property. And I always look at my my field space as property, right? And he's going to always be in my yard. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it, it goes a long way for us to be able to develop those guys in, in all kind, di different positions. You talk about wide receivers. You know, you want to work on pushing the ball down the field. Hard to do that if you only have 20 yards of space. Hard to do that if you're working across the field. You know, you just don't have the ability without the proper field space to be able to get it done, you know, the way you really need to do it to teach your players on an actual, you know, an actual game space. Okay, so Sugar Bowl, Big 12 Championship, Elite Eight, and Catbackers coming up. How much excitement is there going to be for Catbackers this summer? Well, I'm just going to tell you. You talk about Elite Eight, that means Coach Tang will be somewhere in the, in the building, and that guy is unbelievable, right? Uh, but uh, I, listen, anytime we can have the opportunity to be around K-State fans and people who love K-State, uh, and I, I've not really said this in any of the places that I've worked over the years, it, it's just different. 
You know, in this place, because of our fans, because of the people who love K-State, it's just different. And so when we have the opportunity to 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 share with them, it's always a cool experience for me. And it's, you know, uh, I needed a job. Uh, but but that was part of the reason that I that I came here was was these fans. And I think that's a big reason that, you know, as coaches, some of us have had the opportunity to go other places, but working together is cool, but but being around our fans is 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 like I said earlier, it's just different. Okay, I want to ask about two guys, if you don't mind. Uh, McAllister and how he has impressed you in all of the things he appears to be able to do. And then also, we've heard a lot about Julius's process, but I'm, I'm curious this about, about Echo. Can you kind of give us a sense of where you think he uh, lands in this situation? Well, Kobe, uh, man, in recruiting the kid, one thing I was really impressed with is that he was a, a hard work. I can say this about a lot of our players, but this dude, he is a workaholic, you know, when it comes to working out and trying to be better and doing extra. Nobody works harder than the kids. So it's always gratifying when you see players like him who work the way they work go out and have success. Uh, I think that because he's a physical player, of course, he started out, again, he's a guy who started out at corner, but he's a physical player. He's a bigger, thicker, uh, more aggressive player that you would just love to have you know, playing safety on the inside. He's shown really good range, his ability to be able to play the ball in the air. Uh, he does a good job of communicating. Uh, that's important to him. Uh, and so, I, man, I, I couldn't be more impressed with, with where, he's, where he's grown to this spring. Just having an opportunity to see him in pads. Of course, last season was, you know, a, a, a work in progress for him. But this spring, he's really coming to his own. As far as Echo goes, you know, with the draft, you, you, you just never know with, uh, with where guys may end up. But I thought he had a really good showing at uh, the, the uh, pro day. And he, you know, I asked him, well, how, how will you run? He said, I'm going to run fast, you know. Uh, and he did. He, he went out and performed really well in a, in a, few, of the, uh, in a few of the drills. And I think that uh, if I was choosing a team, he's a guy that I would choose on my team because of the fact that he's performed here for many years, but he's been a player who's played on special teams. Like he said, he, he runs really, really well. He came here weighing, I don't know, about 106 pounds, right? He was more than that, fellas. All right, but, uh, but, he, but he really worked to gain weight over the course of his career. Very difficult for him to gain weight, but he worked to gain weight. And I was really going to be concerned as to how he would come back. But he came back at his, at, his, at his playing weight. And so he's gotten to a place where he understands how to keep his body weight where he needs it to be successful, to be as physical as he needs to be as a corner. I think he has the ability to be able to play inside. And as I've talked to scouts and people uh, who are looking at him, from an NFL standpoint, that's the question. Could he play inside? And I think he does have the ability to be able to do that. So I think he'll, he'll get a shot. 